Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be talking about KV selection. So at the end of this video, everybody who watches it should not just be selecting a KV based on motors available. It should be selected based off of running through the proper calculations so you know exactly what KV you have to utilize to hit your target goals. We are also going to be looking at the limitations that we have within this this particular model so that all of you guys can select the motor and speed control that we're going to go and use in this Arma Limitless. Now last week we had to go through and decide what kind of voltage are we going to use to hit 100 miles per hour. We had a choice of 4, 6 or 8S LiPo and the top selection from that video was 8S by quite a large margin. There are a couple different reasons why I love the 8S selection for this particular build. The first one is there are a ton of different motors and setups that we can utilize within the build. The second one is a little bit more obvious. If we choose the voltage on the high end of the range, essentially at the maximum where 8S was the highest that we were willing to go, we are able to draw the lowest amount of current in order to achieve the exact same wattage among the 4, 6, and 8 8S options. So that is going to tell us that out of all the speed controls, we will not need the most beefy 8S speed control that they have on the market. With that being said, let's jump right inside this vehicle and start measuring some of the limitations that we have so we know the physical limitations of size for the speed control as well as our brushless motor. All right, guys, here we are. We're taking a look at the car. We're going to go and start to measure the limitations that we have here under the body. First thing that we should do is pull the body off so we can take a look at a couple details here in the front of the car. Now, we're going to utilize this caliper here to get our dimensions. We're interested in a couple different areas here at the front. Now, the first obvious location that we're interested in is this area here. This area here is where it's going to be housing our brushless motor. It'll mount up into the motor mounting bracket there and it will take up that entire space. Now the distance from this mounting bracket all the way to this part of the assembly for steering is our length limitation which is going to be something that will impact us. Now the other limitation that we have is the width of this motor. So you can see from this angle here that the drive shaft gets in the way in terms of the diameter of the motor. So if we go to a diameter of around over the 42 millimeter mark, we're probably going to end up running into this component here. And the only way to solve that, it is possible, all we need to do is start to move this guy out. And the way that we would do that is by increasing the diameter of either our spur gear or our pinion gear or a combination of both so that we can move away from that area of the car. All right, so let's go ahead and measure the distance that we have available. It's going to be somewhere here around the, looks like it's going to be, let's see if I can get that a little bit further. And what are we reading here? So an absolute maximum of 90 millimeters is going to be our limitation and probably want to stick somewhere closer to the 85 millimeter mark. I do know when I read this in the manual, it does say a maximum of 85 millimeters is what's available. However, we have measured about 90 is available and that's gonna be an extremely tight squeeze there. And we know that the width or diameter measurement is going to be somewhere in the low to mid 40 millimeter mark. So now when it comes to the other side here, our speed control, this is where things are quite restricted in terms of the width and the length here that we have available to us. So if we go and measure this, we're going to get dimensions for what we have available here. It looks like for our width, this is going to be the absolute largest mark here. We have 64 and a half millimeters available, and that's going to utilize the entire width of that section. And then when we talk about the length that we have available, I'm gonna go and flip this guy around. So we're measuring upside down and we're gonna get the length available. So just about there. It's hard to operate the camera in this all at the same time, but 
There we go, we have the actual width there. So I'm gonna lock that in and we can measure what's available here on the caliper. So it looks like we have 79 millimeters there available in that direction. So that's gonna be our ESC absolute maximum limitations there. Anything larger is gonna require a bunch of shuffling of components around. Now, if we do want to select a motor that is larger than 85 millimeters in length, we're probably gonna to have to go and take this if possible and rotate it around. I've done this on a couple different vehicles. This will allow us to get, then use all of this space for the length of the motor and that is going to be more than enough. However, if we go ahead and do that, then we're gonna to have to relocate one of our 4S batteries probably to the other side here. And then as far as the actual speed control, we're probably gonna to have to go and change the location of all the radio speed control box uh, that comes with the car here. So there will be a lot of customization to do if we go and exceed these limitations that we've pointed out. Now let's go through the selection process for KV. We have to perform the calculation in order to determine a suitable amount of KV to use on this build to achieve our goal of 100 miles per hour. Here is the calculator that I've essentially developed so that we can look at two different scenarios here. On the right hand side, we have this part of the calculator that essentially calculates the KV value for us. Now this is quite important whenever you're selecting a motor for any specific build. In our case, with the Arma Limitless, we want to determine the KV that is going to be best suited for our specific setup. Now you guys ended up selecting 8S to be used in this setup. So under our cell count value here, we have to make certain that we have eight cells in series put into this calculator. Then on the right hand side of this specific box, we have the voltage per cell. We want to input the loaded voltage per cell. In this case, we have a 3.3 volt representing that loaded voltage value. This is probably a conservative but yet realistic value. The more that you push your specific radio control car, you're gonna see this value here drop as it's accelerating or as you're accelerating the vehicle and pulling a ton of current especially if you have a very hot setup you're going to see that voltage value dip quite significantly in our case we're going to go with a 3.3 volt value here now if we were wrong and this was not the case we would have to go and use the left hand side to manipulate our values so that we can see how we can impact the overall setup we're going to go through that very shortly here the load factor that I have within the calculator is based on the fact that a KV value for any setup in all setups drops as you load the motor. KV, in fact, it's a constant, it's a velocity constant. However, it is not constant. So there's a catch 22 there and that deals with that KV value actually dropping as we load the motor. This is gonna help make up for that drop as we load the motor and it's a value here, 12%, probably a fairly realistic value that's going to get us close enough to a good approximation. The next values that we have here is the pinion gear and the spur gear tooth count. In this case, the factory limitless pinion gear is 27 tooth and the factory spur gear is a 34 tooth spur. This gives us a gear ratio of 1.259. And the same thing for the internal gear ratio. This is going to be the differential crown gear, in our case, the differential spur, that's at 43 teeth. And then the input shaft to that differential here, we're calling it a pinion gear, is at 13 teeth. This gives us the internal gear ratio 3.308. And then we calculate our final drive ratio of 4.165. So for every 4.165 turns or rotations from your motor, we're gonna get one revolution of the tire. And for every one revolution of the tire, we're gonna get a certain distance out of that. We know the distance because we have to put the tire diameter in. Measuring the limitless, we're at about 101 millimeters. Then we put our speed goal in. We are targeting the 100 mile per hour goal and that works out to 161 kilometers per hour. Then what happens is we get our KV selection. So here we can see the total amount of KV that is specified for this specific motor. It shows as 1500 KV approximately. And below that we have the total amount of RPM that we can expect 
and this is going to be the loaded RPM that we can expect in order to achieve our goal, that's at 40,000 RPM. Now the reason why this is important is because we can utilize a different combination of spur and pinion gears in order to manipulate these values. For example, if we were to go and drop this value by about seven, go with a 20 tooth, and then add seven to our spur gear here, we're gonna be sitting at 41. Now you can see that the KV selection has gone up quite a bit at 2468. However, the total RPM now required is 65,000 RPM. What's key here is that not all motors can do 65,000 RPM. That's why we have this displayed. So you have to check up on this and make sure that we're not exceeding any of the motor specifications. So now let's revert our selection here and go back to the stock configuration. We would expect a 1500 kV to be very suitable for us. Now here's the thing, if we end up changing spur gears, we can get different kV selections out of this. We know that they offer a 39 tooth spur gear for the limitless. So if I go up by five teeth, I can subtract five teeth from my pinion gear and I'm still maintaining the same amount of overall teeth between the pinion and spur gear. This means that we are not going to run into a problem where things do not physically fit. So in this case, we are changing the gear ratio and we're, as a result, we're gonna have a different KV. In this case, the KV selection is gonna be closer to that 2100 uh, KV resulting in about 56,000 RPM in total. On the flip side of that, we know that we can go with something maybe even closer to like a 34-34, which is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. In this case, we are looking at a KV selection of about 1,200. So you can see how we can manipulate the pinion gear and spur gear to fit and suit other KV selections. This is quite key when we're selecting a power system because up front we can be purchasing the gear with the motor in order to make certain that we have the right specifications and setup when it comes to KV motor and pinion gear spur gear. We know exactly what we're going to require in order to come approximately close to our target speed goal. So now once you've done this and selected the KV value that we're going to use, let's say we ended up choosing a motor that had, let's say a 1500 KV. This is where we can start to alter the different values to see what we can do about our setup. Now I did mention in the previous part of this video that if we went Went with the stock gearing 2734, we're more than likely going to crash into the axle or the drive shaft there for motors that are larger than the 40 to 42 millimeter mark. In that case, we're probably gonna have to go up either on the spur gear or the pinion gear to a different value. So if we ended up going up to a different value and that value for us is going to be somewhere around 30, now you can see that instead of our goal of 100 miles per hour, we're probably gonna be shooting close closer to the 110 theoretical miles per hour. So our total speed is going to go up, and as a result, we should be concerned about the heat that we may take on as a result of going up in the pinion gear size. At all costs, we always wanna make certain that we're paying attention to the heat in all of our different components. As I said at the very beginning of this, not all setups as you see, selecting all the different pinion gears and using a load factor in the voltage value is gonna come out as 100% accurate. We're making some assumptions here so that we can best approximate exactly what KV we need to select. Let's say that we ended up picking the 1500 and we're using the stock setup of 27 on the pinion gear and 34 on the spur gear and we don't get 100 miles per hour. We get somewhere around 95 miles per hour. Well, all that means for us is we're looking for another five miles per hour so we can go from the 27 and we start to increase this value. So 31 would be too much. If we look at 29, it's a slightly too much. If we look at a 28, somewhere between 28 and 29. So let's go with the 29 since this is going to theoretically achieve our goal. This is what we would have to move up to in order to achieve that according to the calculator here. 
So this is a good way, a good tool to use. And for anyone that wants to use something like this, what I'll do is I'll take this exact spreadsheet, I'll drop a link to the spreadsheet right in the Patreon website. So you can download this and play around with it. All the formulas are going to be there for you to use. Now it's time for you guys to help select the motor and speed control that we're gonna utilize in this particular model. Now the way that we're gonna go through and do this is in a two stage process. We're gonna first go and select a bunch of motors and speed controls that you guys want to use for this build. Then I'm gonna go and select three of them, the top three that are within that, and we're gonna vote yet again on those in order to come up with a final decision for the motor and speed control that's gonna be installed into this so that we can achieve 100 miles per hour. This way we're gonna show you exactly how simple it can be to go through this process to perform the necessary calculations so that you can get a reliable power system in your high performance builds. Well guys, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can follow along in this build. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.